Welcome to the advanced EndNote tutorial on importing a Word document into EndNote. The starting place for this tutorial is with a bibliography such as this one, which is in an unstructured format, which means simply that it looks good, but EndNote does not know how to interpret this. What a structured document, the sort of data that EndNote can interpret and import successfully, what that looks like, you may not know that, um, but let me take a peek here. This is a set of search results from Biosis, and you'll notice one of the differences you'll notice between this and the previous set of references is these field codes, which basically are EndNote's way of interpreting what goes where. Um, so for example, in this, Biosis has a TI field to indicate that everything here is a title, an AU field to indicate everything here is an author and a source field to indicate here is the journal title, the date, the issue, and the page numbers, etc. So let me close out of that one and back to our references. Now, how do you get these references into EndNote? Well, it's a multi-step process. The first thing we're going to do is go into EndNote and create a filter that will allow us to import this data. Then we will do some minor formatting to this particular document and then we'll go ahead and use the newly created EndNote filter to import this data into EndNote. Now your first step is to create a filter to import your Word document and to do that open up EndNote and then go to the edit menu and go to import filters and select new filter um, there are a variety of options here on the left. We'll go through the relevant ones. Uh, first thing to do is actually save your filter. So go save as and make sure you're in your filters folder which on a PC will be in your C drive, program files and then under EndNote, if you're EndNote 10 it'll say EndNote X um, and then filters and then create, give your filter a name. I'm going to call this Jim's word filter and then this will be saved. So here we are back in our Word document and we're going to format this to allow our EndNote filter to import it. Um, and we'll be going back after this to finish up creating the filter. Um, but for now I'm going to focus on what we need to do to create format the Word document in a way that EndNote can understand it. Step one is actually within Word, uh, make sure you have this display formatting icon um, and you want to click on that and the reason for that is, there we go, um, you're, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a tag or field code in front of every single record and the easiest way to do this is instead of having to copy and paste or type in this field code before every single entry, we can basically, most bibliographies have this double paragraph between each entry. So what we can do is we can instruct Word to go through and make a change after every double paragraph. So to do that, we're going to go to Edit, Replace and this brings up this window. Click on the more arrow and we're going to click on special because we're going to say we want to get paragraph mark and so I'm going to copy that and then paste it. So what we're going to say tell Word is to find a double paragraph and replace it with a double paragraph plus our field code which in this case I'm going to select XX dash dash. You can choose anything you want to um, you can choose SO colon if you want to, uh, but in this case we're going to, I'm just going to choose XX dash dash, um, and what we're going to say is replace all, and say yes, and made 11 replacements. Um, and you will notice that, oh, it looks like it, I'll underline that, we'll get rid of that, and in front of, I put a double there, there's a little bit of cleanup that might be needed. I'll delete that. We want to go through and basically make sure that everyone has this field code in front of it or tag. We're going to go ahead and save our document now and 
say yes. Okay, so now we've formatted the document in a way. So let's go back over to EndNote and we'll um, finish up creating the filter. Now that your filter has been saved, we'll go ahead and move to the template section where we'll actually be doing two things. We'll be creating a tag and we'll be inserting fields. And the tag is simply the field codes that if you remember the biosis search that we looked at, um, these field codes, TI, AU, SU, etc., would all show up here, you know, column down here, um, and then it would, in under fields, it will say what goes there. So it would say TI here, and then over here it will say title, and then it will say AU here, and it will say author over there. Now what we're faced with is um, a document that has no field code. So we're going to actually do two things. We're going to format the Word document so that there are field codes and then insert fields. Okay, now that we have formatted our Word document, what do we do? Well, under Templates, under Tag, you may have guessed by now, what we're going to actually do is put the tag or field code we just put into our Word document under Tag. So type in XX dash dash and then hit the Tab key. Now, what we're going to put in the field, for this we're going to need to go back to our Word document. We're actually going to take all of this information and put it into I'm going to copy this, go back to EndNote. I'm actually now going to paste this in. This is a little bit easier to do. Um, what I've got here is I've got author information, I've got a title, I've got a journal title, and then I've got an issue, a year, and then pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say everything before the semicolon. I will delete that. And then under Insert Field, I want Author. So this will tell EndNote every time it encounters something before. The first information it's going to encounter is an author. And then what comes after the semicolon is a title. So I'll highlight that, delete it, and I'll put in a title. This one is the journal. And I'll put in Journal. This is a volume. Insert volume. No. Let me put this. I'll put the year in parentheses. You want to leave the parentheses in there. Uh, year. And then finally, pages. I'm going to leave the PP in because that's actually not part of the record, but EndNote needs to know that it's going to show up there. So now I need to do pages. So I'm actually. I've created the template successfully. Now what you'll be able to figure out pretty quickly is this is going to work for every record that is consistently formatted like this. Um, the success of a filter like this that you create, how much of the information um, of each record it's going to import successfully, uh, is going to depend on how consistently formatted your records are. If there's a lot of variety, um, you're going to you're going to have to do a lot of cleanup on your own. Um, the other thing that's going to be really helpful is that there are distinct punctuation marks between uh, fields, uh, semicolons, titles. Uh, in this case, it looks like a comma. Um, what and we'll talk about this a little bit more as it goes along. But that's basically now we've cre successfully created the template section. Okay, now that the templates is taken care of, let's tackle a couple other areas, um, author parsing and continuation line. Author parsing is simply uh, telling EndNote what to do with authors. And the first thing to do is go over to your Word document and see how the author names are entered. Um, in this case, it looks like first name or first initials is followed by last name and that seems to be the case for every single entry. Sometimes you'll have the first author will have the last name, uh, comma, first, and then all the others will be first and last. Um, and basically we need to tell EndNote what to do with that. So, in this case, name order is first always precedes last, and 
the infer interpret first names is you can leave it as smart. Um, in this case, we know it's initials only, so we can do that. Author name separators. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. Um, it's essentially a comma. And so between the authors, we're going to click other and comma. Now, if you're working with a document that the there's a comma between first and last names and also a comma between authors, um, it's going to be a bit messy and you're going to have to do some cleanup later. But that should take care of author parsing. Now quickly, continuation lines, what you want to do here is tell the filter to ignore indents. Untag lines are always a continuation of the preceding line. I'm not going to go into an explanation of why, just know that if you want your filter to work, click on ignore indents. You've all been waiting for, let's see if we can actually use our filter to import our Word document. So the first thing to do is go to File, Import, and we're going to choose our file. Um, there's my Word document. And then under Import option, we need to locate the filter we created. Uh, you're probably going to need to go to Other Filters. There's my Jim's Word filter. Choose. I'm going to go with Import All, and voila, there we are.